In this interview, we hear from Deb. She's 27 years old, lives in Queens, New York, and has a master's degree. She's a genetic counselor, and she walks us through how she discovered that career field and some resources people can look at if they're interested in pursuing it as well. So let's get started. Hi, Deb. Thank you for joining me today. I'm really excited to talk to you. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, um, so your career is as a genetic counselor, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so I, when I first talked to you about your career, I was I, like nerded out a little bit because I had never heard of it and I think it's so cool. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you discovered that career field? Yeah, so actually I didn't know anything about this career until I was in college. Mm -hmm. um, I entered college thinking that I was going to be pre-med and eventually be studying for the MCATs and apply to med school. Um, but after about one semester of college, I said, that's not going to happen. Um, so I knew I wanted to still be in a field involved with science, healthcare, um, something along those lines. Um, I, I hear sirens coming. It's okay. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Okay, the um, hazards of the city life. Yes, they're probably going to go right past my apartment. Okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, through, through my undergraduate college, though, they were giving some sort of presentation about other healthcare fields that didn't require medical school. So I attended that, and that's actually how I learned about genetic counseling. And then I did just more research into it and decided that it was probably something that I would enjoy doing and also be good at doing. That's so cool. And so what, did you have to change your major at all to pursue that track um, in undergraduate? And then did you know you have to go on to graduate school? What is the, the span of education you were kind of signing yourself up for? Yeah, so I knew it would be a master's degree um, and all the programs are, are two years. So I knew it would be another two years after undergraduate and you need an undergraduate degree to go into the master's program. Um, so I didn't need to change my major. And actually, if I was any other major that was not in kind of a hard science, that would have been okay too. Um, the only thing that they look for is the prerequisite classes. So for example, if I was a history major, I would still have to take all of like the chemistries and the biologies and mm -hmm. psychologies um, kind of on the side or maybe do a minor. Um, so you could really major in anything, but you just have to make sure you get all of the prereq classes that they require for the programs. Cool. Awesome. Um, and then could you kind of just walk me through what your work environment is like and what you do on a daily basis? Yes. So I am a clinical counselor, which means that I see patients face to face. Um, so my current setting is in an outpatient, like ambulatory um, building a bunch of doctor's offices and um, like ambulatory surgery, just outpatient things. So um, I'm in the breast surgery department. Um, and basically what I do on a daily basis is I have patients scheduled for consults. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll meet with them face to face. Um, we are doing a lot of telehealth right now also. So sometimes it's on a Zoom meeting. Um, but I meet with patients for about an hour on average. Um, we have our consult and we make a plan um, on average between three to four patients a day. And then the rest of the day is me kind of doing my research for that particular patient and coordinating testing and um, a little bit more of like the administrative side of, of work for the rest of the day. Okay, so do you work primarily with people who are experiencing symptoms in something and you're trying to help them figure out what could be the root cause of that? Is it um, people who are expecting a baby? Who, what are the type of patients you work with? That might have been very clear to you, but <laughs> not, no, not, having that, not having a background. Um, uh, yeah, so that was, yeah, I give a very general example. Um, so there's a lot of different specialties that genetic counselors can go into. Some, some roles are more general, seeing people who are expecting babies or planning to have babies, mm -hmm. um, uh, families with children who have an undiagnosed disease or a disability, um, 
adults or children with cancer and then other general um, general genetics where it could be cardiology, neurology, anything else. Um, currently I'm in a cancer only setting. So um, these, these positions can be kind of a mix. Um, generally what I'm dealing with is um, breast and gynecological cancer. So most of my patients are women um, and they've been recently diagnosed with one of these cancers. Um, however, I do also have patients who only have a family history um, and are trying to be proactive before a cancer develops so we can decide if, if testing is right for them and then manage them after the results come back. Wow. So do you ever, is it tough for you emotionally at all? And because that, that's heavy, heavy topics to be discussing with people. Yeah, it really, for me personally, it really kind of depends on, on the patient because I can have the same, the same patient who's the same age with the same diagnosis four times a day, but all of those consults will be very different mm -hmm. because my patients um, perceive their cancer diagnosis and their prognosis differently from somebody else who has the exact same thing going on. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be emotionally heavy, um, but part of my training actually is to be able to recognize my own biases and my own feelings about what's going on with my patients mm -hmm. and then be able to kind of distance myself from things that aren't personally happening to me um, because compassion fatigue and clinical burnout are really, really real things. So they, they get us prepared and trained for how to combat those. So is that part of the, the master's program in particular? Yes. Doing like mm -hmm. um, clinical rounds, maybe. I know nurses do clinicals, but I'm not sure what they would be called in your scenario. Yep. So we have clinical rotations. Um, so we will be sent to different sites um, that have different specialties, and we'll see patients there. Um, but the the education about combating clinical burnout and compassion fatigue. Um, is usually something that's happening in like the counseling courses that we take. So more of the didactic stuff. So are there any additional ongoing education or certifications that you have to do throughout your career to maintain some kind of licensure? Yes. So licensure and being certified are actually two different things within my career. So lic licensure is state specific. Okay. Um, and actually here in New York, we don't have licensure for genetic counselors. Um, so I don't, I don't need to deal with that, but all genetic counselors need to be certified with the American Board of Genetic Counseling, which is um, a certification exam that you take once you graduate um, a genetic counseling master's program. Right now, the recertification is every five years. So within that five years, you need to collect continuing um, education units or, or credits, basically. So there's always educational programs going on. You can attend conferences, um, things like that. And if you are feeling really ambitious, you can also just retake the certification exam in five years if you would want to. Um, that, would be, that would be sufficient, um, but usually people don't want to do that. So, um, but yeah, so we have to have continuing continuing education. Okay, very cool. Um, yeah. And do you have any, I guess, since entering the field, have you developed any mentorships with anyone where you kind of look it up to them for guidance on how to move forward in your career? Um, I know that's like a very general question. <laughs> yeah, kind of unofficially. Yeah. Um, so with my clinical rotations, I've created relationships with some of my past supervisors who are now my, my colleagues. Um, so I do still turn to them for like clinical advice and things like that. Um, however, through our National Society for Genetic Counselors, there's also a mentorship program that you can sign up for that's completely free. And it's basically just genetic counselors giving back to to people who are asking for it. So I actually recently signed up for a mentor in the field to help me, to help guide me kind of advance my career 
a little bit more and it's really it's really casual um mm -hmm. it's kind of just like doing a zoom like this with somebody else who has similar experience but more experience than you um and just kind of figuring out where there are weaknesses or things that you're you feel like you're lacking and and how you can achieve that that's really awesome. If someone is interested in being a genetic counselor, but maybe doesn't want to be face-to-face um, -face with patients daily, is there another alternative that they can do but still work in the field? Yes. So it would all still be all the same training. So during our two-year master's program, you get trained for every single specialty um, and even lab work and industry work as well. Um, and then it's kind of up to you how you want to branch out and you can switch at any point in your career because you've already had all of the training. Um, but one of the more popular non-clinical settings is a lab setting. And the lab genetic counselors work more primarily with interpreting the results, creating those reports, and then kind of serving as a liaison between the ordering doctors and other genetic counselors okay. as well. Awesome, that's pretty cool. Um, it's, you know, you don't always come across a field where you have like multiple options that you're pre-qualified for based on the education you receive. So this seems like yes. a very flexible option for people who want to be in a medical setting. So that's, that's yeah. really cool to learn about. Um, yeah. Let's see, what else can I ask you? Um, I feel like you covered so many things already. Um, are there... Any specific, in your opinion, any specific types of personalities that you feel do, do well in this type of career? Um, yes and no. So one of the things, one of the things about our career, and I don't know if this is just the way that it is, we're, we're mostly women um, because a lot of these clinical roles are very emotionally heavy and can carry that emotional burden. Um, women just tend to be a little bit more sensitive to that, just I, I guess just naturally, um, which I think is something that attracts a lot of women to the field. Um, it definitely helps to be a naturally empathic person. Um, for people who aren't as naturally empathic and don't, um, don't mesh well, with, with that kind of setting, if they're still going into genetic counseling, it might be more towards industry um, than clinical work. Um, mm -hmm. But those type of people tend, tend to do very well. Oh, cool. In the place that you work, do you mm -hmm. have many colleagues or is it more of an independent role? Yes, so I'm part of a group of genetic counselors, um, specifically in the building that I am located in. I'm the only one there, um, but across other sites um, across the city, there, there are other cancer genetic counselors. Um, so we do work together all the time because we're constantly bouncing ideas off each other and collaborating. Um, so those are, those are the other genetic counselors that I work with kind of on a daily basis, although they're not physically in the same location as me. Mm -hmm. um, but the people I interact with in my, in my place are like um, the nurses, the NPs, PAs, and the doctors. Those are the people that I see in the clinic daily. Okay, awesome. Um, and I wanna say that maybe lastly, do you have any advice for anyone that might be interested in researching becoming a genetic counselor further? Yes. So. The, the easiest way is to go on to the National Society for Genetic Counselors website. They have a lot of resources for um, prospective students and links to all the different programs. Also, there have been like an increasing amount of social media pages um, for general genetics and prospective genetic counseling students. Um, so there's Instagram pages, there's podcasts, um, things that can be really helpful. Awesome. So I think that would be a great place for somebody to start, to start learning about it. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of deep dive into it if you, if you want to continue. Yeah. Very cool. So I will try to find some of those resources and I'll link them in the description below. Um, yeah. I want to thank you so much <laughs> for taking the time to talk to me. Thank um, you. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.